Welcome to the American Board of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery podcast series. I'm your host, Carla Medlenka. Our team creates each episode to help busy otolaryngologists, head and neck surgeons learn more about their exams, continuing certification, and the process and requirements of board certification. In this episode, we will walk you through how to interpret your otolaryngology training exam scores. Let's meet our two guests. If you have recently taken the OTE, you may already know Shannon Lampkin. She is the ABO HNS Senior Resident Coordinator and works with program directors, program coordinators, and residents. Shannon will be talking with Dr. Brian Nussenbaum, ABO HNS Executive Director. Welcome, Shannon, Dr. Nussenbaum. Thanks, Carla. I'm happy to be here. Thanks, Carla. The Otolaryngology Training Exam, or OTE, is an integral part of the board certification process. I'm glad to have the opportunity to offer more information about its importance and help clarify questions our residents might have about interpreting their examinee score report. Thank you, Dr. Nussenbaum. For our residents um, who just took the exam or will be taking the OTE exam, why don't we start by discussing a bit about the exam and its purpose? Sure. The main purpose of the otolaryngology training exam is, is really formative in intent rather than summative. A summative exam is like the written boards or the written qualifying exam, which is a criterion referenced exam meaning that there's a cut score and what we report is whether you pass or don't pass. And whether you pass or not is really dependent on how you perform related to a cut score that is set in advance of the exam using a psychometrically rigorous process called standard setting. Uh, For the OTE, the uh, score report uh, reports the performance of the residents in, uh, in terms of stanine ranks and, and that goes to the fact that the exam is more of a norm referenced exam, meaning that the performance of a resident is compared to other residents who take the exam uh, during that administration, rather than comparing the performance to a cut score. And that's why there's really no pass or fail on the otolaryngology training exam. It really is a measurement of how the resident does in comparison to their peers, not only at their PGY level, but also at a national level. Thank you, Dr. Nussenbaum. That was very informative. For residents who recently uh, have taken the OTE exam and are going to be receiving their scores, can you explain how the exam is scored? I know this is a complex question, so maybe we can break that down into pieces for everyone. Sure. When a resident looks at their score report, they'll see um, uh, the specialty areas, and there's nine different specialty areas listed, um, all the way from allergy to sleep medicine. And, And if you look across each row, you'll see a few different scores. One is the percent correct, and that really is the percentage of the questions on the exam in that specialty area that you uh, uh, got correct. The the second number there is something called a scaled score, and a scaled score is really a statistical transformation of your raw score to a statistical number by our our psychometrician. And and really the higher the number, the better. Um, And and then if you keep on looking across the row, you'll see a group stanine rank followed by a national stanine rank. For PGY-1s who take the exam, you'll just see a stay nine rank in the group stay nine rank because we do not include PGY-1 scores in the national stay nine rank, national meaning for everybody in an AC, in ACGME accredited training program programs who, uh, who took the exam. So the national stay nine rank includes the scores from those PGY-2 um, through PGY-5. The group stay nine rank is, is your stay nine rank compared to your peers. In other words, compared to those in your peer group at your PGY level. And once again, the national stay nine rank is how your performance was related to everybody who took the exam in an ACGME accredited training program without including the, um, the scores from the, the PGY-1 residents. 
In terms of the Stainine rank, the Stainine um, stands for standard score of nine categories. So the Stainine ranks go from a one to a nine, with a one being the worst and a nine being the best. And in the understanding your score report that's available on the board's website, the um, you'll you'll see on page two there's a further description of Stainines of the one through a nine. And um, on in that description, for each of the stainai numbers, there is a, a, a an, an additional number just below it that says percentage of distribution. So, for instance, if you're in a stainai of one, that means that you're somewhere between the zero and fourth percentile. If you're in a stainai of a two, you see underneath the two, there's a seven percent number. So if you're in a stain nine of two, that means you're somewhere between the fourth and the 11th percentile. Um, and because you just add up the, the, the four and the seven. If you're in the third stain nine rank, you see the number below there is a 12. So you're somewhere between the 11th and 23rd percentile and on and on and on. And there is a description in the paragraph about how to do those calculations all the way up to the fact that if you're in the ninth stay nine, you're somewhere in the 96th to, uh, to 99th percentile. So um, if you want to calculate those, you certainly can. But really, the major point is that the higher the stay nine, the better. And a nine is the best and a one is, is the worst. Thank you, Dr. Nusamam. One of the questions that I get asked frequently from residents is they get their score report back. And for the PGY ones who take our examination, um, they only have a score showing in the group stay nine rank. And for the national stay nine rank, it's just blank. And so they automatically think that their report is wrong or missing information. So can you elaborate on that a little bit for residents? Sure. So for the PGY ones, we do not include those scores in the in the national stay nine rank uh, simply because as the PGY-1 taking the exam, you, um, those residents haven't even completed a full year of training in otolaryngology, head and neck surgery. And depending on the timing of rotations with six months of rotations during the PGY-1 year being non-otolaryngology rotations, those individuals may have even only rotated for one or two months at that point on an otolaryngology service. So, um, so we do not include the scores for the PGY-1s in the national stay nine rank, which only includes the scores from those that have completed at least one one year of um, otolaryngology head and neck surgery training, which would be the PGY two through PGY five um, residents. Thank you, Dr. Nusimam. That was very good explanation. And uh, another frequently asked question that I get from programs, uh, not from residents, but from program directors and coordinators, is asking if. The board provides a um, ranking for programs for the OTE scores. The board does not do that. In the score report, the, the understand your score report, there is a page that has the um, average scaled scores for all programs. So the program directors do uh, learn what their, what their scaled score is as a program and, and you, and, and somebody can go to that figure in the score report and figure it out, you know, where, where how the program did as a, as, a, as a program, not the individual resident level, but as a program, how you did compared to other programs. But that's not, uh, the, the board does not provide any, any official rankings in that regard. Thank you, Dr. Nusimam. Um, Shannon, if I could just elaborate a, a little bit more on the um, formative intent of the exam. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, as a resident, you, when you see your your group stay nine ranks, and really the group stay nine rank uh, from the board perspective is the most important number there. It's not necessarily the percent correct or scaled score. It's your group stay nine rank because that really is an indication for you compared to your peers at your PGY level um, um, uh, how you're doing in terms of your knowledge acquisition. It's a way for you to look at the across the nine specialty areas that we report on. And then we do also report a, a total um, number in terms of the, 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 your, your group stay nine rank overall for the entire exam. 
And, and once again, you could see where you are related to your peers in terms of the acquisition of knowledge. Uh, the other thing that you can see is that where you're doing um, well in terms of areas of knowledge strengths as compared to your peers, but you could also uh, see, you could also determine where your uh, potential areas of knowledge gaps are compared to your peers. So hopefully you'll be able to use the, the, um, the, the information provided in the examinee score report to, um, uh, to, to focus your um, educational opportunities during the, the, during the, the year after the in-service exam. Uh, so that way, hopefully you could close those areas of knowledge gaps um, and while hopefully, uh, you know, maintaining the areas of your knowledge strengths. And, and really, it's, it's meant to be an iterative process. As a resident, if you, um, if you take the exam as an intern, you'll take the exam for, for five years. And, and, um, and so hopefully this iterative process over a period of time of getting your score report, seeing where your knowledge strengths are as compared to your peers with acquisition of knowledge, seeing where your knowledge gaps are, um, and, and hopefully have an opportunities to close those knowledge gaps in an iterative manner over a period of time, best prepares you for um, the, the written board exam, which occurs shortly after completing residency. Thank you for that, Dr. Newsom, mom. So for the OT uh, examination, Dr. Newsom, mom, you had just spoken about how this is a tool for residents and programs um, to see where the knowledge gaps may be, if there are any and for them to improve upon those areas. And that is to help prepare them for the written qualifying exam. Now, one of the questions I get is, can anybody take the OTE examination or is it only for residents? Shannon, thanks for that question. And that most frequently comes up for those who unfortunately do not pass the, the written qualifying exam, that when we have conversations with them, we do inform those individuals that if they would like to to take the OTE um, um, at the at the on the normal administration date, which usually happens about five to six months before the the, the written qualifying exam, that if they would like to take that as a practice exam uh, before reattempting the exam, that we do allow for that. And so, um, uh, so if you're if if uh, if you're unfortunately in that situation where you did not pass the written qualifying exam, that would be uh, an option for you to take the the OTE even after done with res after you're completed with residency. Um, I, the I will say that in that situation, in order to register for for it, you wouldn't be registering through your residency program. You'd be registering it through the board, um, and and you'd need to contact yourself, Shannon, to uh, as you know to to register for it for for the board to find you a, a, a site where you'd be able to take the exam. And as a resident, um, your program pays the exam fee, but if you're out of residency, taking it as a practice exam for the written qualifying exam, then you, you would um, personally need to pay the exam fee. Thank you, Dr. Newsombaum and Shannon for explaining these details about the otolaryngology training exam. Thank you, Carla. It was my pleasure to be here today, and uh, I hope that this is information that the residents and programs uh, will find useful. Completely agree with what Shannon just said, and uh, really appreciate the opportunity to record this podcast today. Where can listeners find additional information on this topic? So listeners can view the Understanding Your Score Report on the ABO HNS website. Um, you have to log into your portal first to access that information. Um, or they can also reach out to me via email with any questions that they may have. And my email address is sll at abohns.org. For details about the oral training exam or other ABO HNS information, Visit our website, abohns.org, or call our office, 713-850-0399. Thanks for listening.